What is up, everybody? Welcome back for another Madden 23 rebuild. Today we're going to be rebuilding the Tennessee Titans. And I think I'm just, I don't know which QB to roll with. Apparently, they had it set up to where Malik Willis was going to be starting. I just don't know if that's the right move because he is a 67 overall, I believe. And yeah, Malik Willis is 67. I know Tannehill's old, 34. It's probably going to be his last season anyway if he were to play. Might be better to see what we have in Malik Willis if he can get anything done. Not like he has the greatest weapon, so I don't expect much. We have, you know, Derrick Henry, of course. Hassan Haskins. Robert Woods, Traylon Burks. I'm going to put Traylon Burks at number one. O-line isn't great. I've seen worse. Right tackle definitely needs help. Uh, I'm pretty sure Ben Jones is old. Luan's getting up there. Yeah, but this is going to be a Ben Jones last year probably. Uh, we have Austin Hooper. Maybe he can get something going. I don't expect much. He's 27. If he gets a dev trait this season, it's possible. Uh, a Conquo behind him is pretty decent. So it's possible for that to happen. On the defensive side, we have Kevin Byard and Imani Hooker, which it's something, right? Bud Dupree, Harold Landry, and then middle linebackers are not great. This team is going to take a lot of work. Jeffrey Simmons, Tierra Tart, D'Amico Autry. Autry's pretty old. Uh, if Fulton or McCreary can get a dev trait, that'd be great. I move Caleb Farley to CB2 instead of McCreary, and McCreary's going to be in the slot. Yeah, we're going to go with computer-generated class. Let's see if there's anything good in it, to be honest. I don't, I don't know. Uh, there's top two, three top five QBs. So there's that. Top, two top five receivers as well. Mm, there's a lot of QBs in round one, it looks like. Oh boy. Could change throughout the year. But we'll see what we have Malik Willis and we'll make a decision from there. At midseason, this team is doing way better than I expected. I did not expect a five and one start. Uh, looks like we have a breakout DB as well. Amani Hooker. I think we lost the first game and then won five straight. I also turned injuries off for this. Amani Hooker could get up to superstar this next game. But I did turn injuries off because it is a more of a fantasy style rebuild. Let's take a look at players ready to negotiate, see who we could bring back. Tier Tart is 25. Possible. Definitely want to bring back Nate Davis. 25 with Star Dev is uh something I want on this team going forward. He wants 14 for two years. We're going to go five years, and I'm going to give him this deal. He wants more, and we're going to give him more because he's probably a solid piece to have going forward. Austin Hooper, 27. I, I'd be comfortable with this, and he accepts. I'm kind of surprised he did because he didn't have any interest. in. No one has interest in this team. Dang. Uh, I could bring David Long back, see if he can break out at some point. That's a good deal, actually. We have, I just realized we have no cap room. Okay, we're going to have to do something. <laughs> oh, boy. Savings. Yeah, Tannehill has to go. Taylor Luan. That, I'm going to have to wait till the end of the season. We'll finish the season with Luan, but he's going to be gone after this season for sure. Derrick Henry's on a pretty friendly deal. Nico Autry might be worth the penalty. I don't know where all our cap space is. Tannehill's obviously eating up a lot, but like, uh, let's see who's taking up the most next year. Bud Dupree is uh, not worth that contract. And we can, all right, Bud Dupree's gone after this season as well. Honestly, I might just, I'm just going to cut him now, actually. Mm, we'll trade him. We'll see what we can get. He only has two and a half sacks. He's not really doing too much for the team, so I'm okay with trading Bud Dupree away. Sending Bud Dupree and Nico Autry to the Eagles for Quez Watkins straight up. And we actually ended up losing our next game to the Texans. All right, Amani Hooker didn't get his breakout. Not surprising. Um, that's not good. You don't want to see that. Uh, Derrick Henry's obviously carrying the team. Now we do have money to re-sign and give Nate Davis a very player-friendly deal. Wasn't too much, honestly. And then we'll get Tier Tart back, I guess. Give him a three-year. Bump that up a little bit. And that should get it done. All right. 
All right, cool. We got Aaron Brewer back. In week 12, we got another breakout DB scenario. Christian Fulton looking to become superstar, right? Or no, star. My bad. But uh, yeah, that would be very nice if we could get that perhaps possibly. Wow, Fulton couldn't even get star. Come on, dude. Well, we ended up making the playoffs first year, winning the division at 9-8. and eight. We did get swept by the Texans, which is kind of uh, embarrassing. But the first of many, we're just going to play it cool. I don't think we're going to win. But, you know, if we do, it would be pretty cool. And we're going to send the full game. Look at that. We get a field goal, first drive, take the ball back, get another field goal. Let's get another one. Ooh, three field goals off the bat, 9-0. We're going to make it 12-0. We got 12 7 now. Let's make another field goal. All right, we got a touchdown for once. 19 to 7. Looks like we're going to take down the Patriots. 22 to 7. 22 14. They still have a chance. And the Titans make a stand and they will win in the wild card round. Malik Willis is terrible. 144. And yeah, it's a um, Derrick Henry oriented offense. Yeah, so looking at Malik Willis's rankings, not good. But Derek Henry led the league in yards and, of course, carries because we didn't pass the ball. 25 to 10 isn't, I guess, terrible for a 67 overall rookie. He's a 69 now. He didn't progress much throughout the season. Um, yardage, terrible. I'm sure it has a lot to do with the playbook because they are run first team. And that's like 23, 2400 yards here. So, yeah, it makes sense. And Haskins had 10 touchdowns. Oh, my. Wes Watkins led the league in yards with 1,005 touchdowns. Woods, 995. Burks, 950 and 6. And Austin Hooper had 500 yards and 7 touchdowns. It is not a passing offense. Uh, so as long as we have Derrick Henry, we can win some games. <laughs> uh, tackle for loss, Jeffrey Simmons with 12. Sacks, Simmons and Landry both had double digits. you like to see that. Earl Basham ended up with 2.5. That's whatever. Four picks for Fulton and then a bunch of guys with one. That's unfortunate. Force fumbles. We had a couple. Anyone score on defense? Nope. Kicking Randy Bullock, 54 for 56 on extra points. And he just, he's old, you know. Stonehouse, looks like he had a pretty good season. Was Watkins, was not our returner. I guess that was all with the Eagles because I had Kyle Phillips returning, which didn't turn out very well. But that's the season stats. Somehow we made the playoffs. Derrick Henry literally put the team on his back. And uh, we'll look at yearly awards when we get to that point. And next up, we have the Chiefs. So we actually lost to 35 to 28 in the regular season. Looks like there's going to be a blizzard as well in Kansas City. What is Ben Jones doing? This man's spinning. <laughs> he didn't know who to talk to. Out here in this KC blizzard, let's see if we can get a dub. We jump out to an early 7-0 lead. Chiefs finally get a field goal. We take a 10-3 lead after that. And then the Chiefs come back, tie it up 10-10 right before halftime. They get a field goal, 13-10 Chiefs. They're going to extend it to a 20-10 lead. Looks like this game's going to be put out of reach. Unless we can score here, we do. Chiefs are up 23-17. They extend it to 29-17. And we cannot stop the onslaught. Well, it was a valiant effort. We at least made the playoffs and won a playoff game in the first season. But still a long way to go. And we'll get that Super Bowl eventually. I can feel it. All right. Offensive player of the year, Derrick Henry, coming in at number four. And aside from that, I don't really expect much. We're not going to be on best QB. Offensive rookie, though? Wow. Malik Willis at nine. That's how bad our passing attack was. Best. How does Derrick Henry not win? I guess Josh Jacobs had more touchdowns. Best receiver, nothing. Best O line, probably nothing. Best D line, no. Oh, Jeffrey Simmons at two. <laughs> uh, linebacker Landry was at 10. DB, we got Fulton at six. And for kickers, I don't know how Bullock got even got on the list, but. uh. He was on there. And the Niners actually end up winning the Super Bowl 31-24 over the Chiefs. With Nick Bosa being Super Bowl MVP. I forgot to look at DevOps during Super Bowl week. Doesn't look like we really had any. Unless Traylon Burks went up and went back down. 
which is always a possibility because of this game, but he didn't. So we didn't get anything on offense. Uh, it looks like Basham went up to star. So that kind of influences me to maybe offer him a contract, even though he may not start, we could need him eventually. And I think I saw that Fulton ended up getting star just based off his season. So that's something. Gonna make a little offer to bash him. I'll put this up to two and see if he accepts. And he's gonna test free agency, fine. Gives us more money to work with. And we're gonna have even more money when I get rid of some people, so don't worry about it. Sending Tannehill to Washington Commanders for a four this year and a three next year. I was gonna send him to the Bucks, but they don't have the money for him. And the Bucks don't even have a QB on their roster at the moment, but Washington only has Sam Howell. Tannehill's an upgrade for them, and it clears up some cap space for us. Only targeting two players in free agency, but they're big ones, Josh Allen and Javon Hargrave. Josh Allen, we were like third place. I bumped up the money a lot. So he's, it's a big contract, but I learned from the last rebuild, you got to like, you got to overpay if you want someone and we need these guys. So if we get these guys, we're going to be in a good position. Let's see, Val. Let's see. We got neither of them. That's... <laughs> Uh, Josh Allen goes to the Giants and Javon Hargrave goes to the Steelers. Well, even though I was top of the list, they just, I guess, had more interest in the other teams because I know I offered more money than anyone else did. But uh, we'll see what else we can do, brother. All right, next round of offerings. I know we got Terrence Steele in my last rebuild, but uh, we need right tackle, and he's literally the best one there. Matthew Ioannidis going to be... Who we get instead of Javon Hargrave if he actually decides to come here. And then looking to bring Terrell Basham back. No one else is offering him what I offered him. I offered him a two-year 10. We'll see if he's okay with that. Hopefully he is. Uh, these two are still here, and we got surpassed on both of them. We did get Terrell Basham. I care more about getting Terrence Steele than I do Ionitis. We do a four-year 36. How does that look? Wow, Raiders are still above us. I could... I'm going to leave that there. We'll do 3.2, 4.2, make it a 7.4. And we'll... I don't care if we're the top team or not. We'll see what happens. And we got Steel. We didn't get Ionitis. That's fine. We'll walk out of free agency with Terrence Steele and Terrell Basham back on the team. I didn't end up trading Luan or Robert Woods. Luan, I'll let him stay for this next season. We... Don't really need the money right now anyway. And then he'll be gone after this next season. Same with uh, Ben Jones. Yeah, Ben Jones as well will be gone. And then for Robert Woods, like, I'm going to see what happens in the draft. I don't foresee him staying on this team for this following season. But if he's our best option for a third receiver, ended up signing Brian Edwards for way cheaper than Robert Woods. He's 24 years old, star dev, 73 overall. Uh, I am very comfortable with that. And now... I'm also comfortable with letting Robert Woods walk. And we're going to have to pay Derrick Henry, Jeffrey Simmons next year. There's just a... Uh, we need the money, brother. And I'm going to have to let you go. Uh, bye bye And they have us taking Dwight Knight, a running back, in the first round when we have Derrick Henry. So... That's cool. Uh, the QBs, there's a lot of them that are on top, you know? But none of them look great. Adam Hamels is the only one I would even consider. And I can't move up that high. But at the same time, Abandon's initial reads in favor of the check down. It's not the worst. I just, I can't move up that high. We're going to take what we get. Probably stick it out with Malik Willis for another season. Hopefully not win as many games. So we can actually get a good draft pick as bad as that sounds. Or he develops into a starting caliber quarterback. So there are three quarterbacks and two receivers in the top five, supposedly. So we'll see what happens. The second receiver looked really good to me. And the Lions go with quarterback Reed Hogan. The Bears go with Dwayne Reese, not the receiver that I was looking at. Adam Hamels goes to the Texans as projected. Phil Donald goes to the Seahawks. That's not fair. That dude looks incredible. And then Texans go with... Dion Parton. Okay. Vikings, Gabe Hall. All right, well, we'll go to our pick, see what's there. I don't feel like going through everything because there's just going to be dis disappointment is all it's going to be. 
Um, so I was looking at – well, I'm not going to get a running back. I could. Tyrone Ruggs looks like the best one. As for what I was looking at, we have Derek Davis, Trent, Trent Conley. Derek Davis looks really good, though. Elite speed, great excel, great agility, good change of direction. With A, hit power, A, play rec, A, awareness, B, block chain, B, zone, B, tackle. He looks pretty dang good. And then Trent Conley, same kind of guy. It says elite speed and all that, but he's an outside linebacker. So that remains to be seen. He did run a 4.48, though. His hit power is lower, and that's the only thing kind of holding me back. A pursuit, A play rec, B awareness. He had C pursuit, A play rec, A awareness. He has more hit power. And he they actually ran the same speed on the 40. Actually, Trent Conley looks... Oh, his 40 is a little slower, actually. He ran a 4.48. Looks like he's more agile, though. He has good strength. Um, I kind of want to go with Trent Conley over... Derek Davis with that A pursuit. Outside of them, there's a corner. We don't need a corner that bad. And, like, I'm going with Trent Conley. Probably going to be a bad pick. Yep, normal dev. But he's going to be a starting middle linebacker for sure. Going to go with Jamichael Hightower here. He looks a lot like a Javon Hargrave type player. So he's going to play that spot. We needed to fill a spot on the D line. Another normal dev. Unfortunate. but. He was just the best player available for our needs. And then in round three, I still have some players on the board, I believe. Ron Bloom was the other D-lineman I was looking at. He was round three to four. He just went before a pick. So that's unfortunate. I do want at least one O-lineman. We're going to need two next season. But if I can at least get one here. I'll be happy. Manny Wilds looks pretty decent. And then Matt Gibson at center with his A impact, A pass. So here we're going to take Manny Wilds. Hopefully he's going to be decent. And of course, normal dev. <laughs> oh, I failed to notice the first time I looked, but Matt Gibson didn't even go to the combine, which you don't see much. Like you do see them not going to the pro bay, pro day pretty often, but. Skipping the combine, I don't really see that too often. We're going to go with Matt Gibson here and, of course, normal dev. Great. While everyone was a normal dev, everyone was at least a 70-plus overall, so I'm not too upset, actually. Yes, the dev traits would be nice, but, ew, 96. Bro, you're playing middle linebacker. But the overalls are more important in the long run. Well, not in the long run, actually, in the short run. Hopefully they can take these overalls and give themselves better dev traits. We had Michael Hightower coming out. He's a 73. 82 finesse, 71 block shed. That's pretty dang good with 88 strength. 85 excel. I'll, you know what? I'll take it. He's going to start right away. 86 speed. 77 block shedding is great. 61 zone is a little low, but for a rookie, I'll take it. Then we got Manny Wilds left guard. Might slide him over to right guard. We'll see. 75 run and pass block is pretty good. Matt Gibson, who I thought was going to be better because he didn't go to the combine, ends up with 79 pass block and 71 run block. Also pretty well-rounded, decent-looking lineman. Like I said, Donald looked like a freak, and he is. Oh, my gosh. Doesn't have all the traits, but he's still a beast. I want to see what he is. Star. <laughs> He comes out with ideal sense of pressure and conservative forcing passes. That's pretty good. His stats look really good as well. Pretty solid. Uh, he's not fast, but you don't really need that when you're in sim. And he's only a star. Going into year two, this is what the roster is going to look like. Fairland Burks at wide receiver one, Quez at two, and then Brian Edwards at wide receiver three going to start. Dylan Redunds at left guard because he's just slightly better than Manny Wilds. On the defensive side of the ball, going to be starting Conley at middle linebacker one. Is that Cunningham behind him? I don't, I don't know what to do with David Long or Cunningham. Got to get rid of one of them because there's no point in having both. It's a tough decision. We have Landry and Basham starting at edge. 
Same safeties. We're going to start McCreary over Farley because he is slightly better. And McCreary is going to be the slot corner as well. We're going to have Hightower starting at left end. Signed to Sean Hand. Aguim. Linval. Just a bunch of depth pieces to surround them. I replaced Bullock with Matt Gay because better kick power, better kick accuracy. Why not? And then we're going to have Conley also starting a sub linebacker. I feel like Long is better to keep in the long run because he's younger. May end up replacing him anyway. But this is how the team's going to look. Traylon Burks in the slot. And uh, let's see if we can do better in year two. At the midseason mark, we are three and four. Not quite as good as last season, but that's to be expected. We did much better than expected last season, to be honest. Uh, four year deal. Four year 46, see if that gets it done. And that works for Derrick Henry, it works for me too. Jeffrey Simmons, someone we also want to bring back, get him on a five year 113. Ooh, he wants a lot more, good. Uh, Taylor Lewan, we will not be bringing back. I realize Manny Wilds can actually slide over to left tackle to fill in that spot. Ben Jones, we have our center of the future. Christian Fulton will bring back. Quez Watkins will probably bring Brad. What do they bring back? Matt Gay. Eh. May end up changing the playbook at some point just to get better passing numbers because it kind of sucks not getting any passing yards. Jeffrey Simmons keeps being ridiculous, so we're going to have to franchise tag him, unfortunately. But I can't let him go. That's someone we kind of need. At the end of the season, we finish with a 7-10 and record. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate, but at least we'll have a better draft pick, I guess. It's something. Malik Willis still not doing great. Don't know if it's the playbook. I should have changed it to see if he would perform better with a different playbook. And Haskins and Henry, of course, decided to split touchdowns. At least Willis did get four rushing touchdowns, so he finished with 30 total. It's not terrible. It's just the playbook, man. Uh, Traylon Burks had a really good season, 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns. Quez with 904 touchdowns, and Brian Edwards, 600 yards, two touchdowns. This playbook's just, I don't know if it's the playbook or if it's Malik Willis. Uh, Trent Conley finishes with 111 tackles, and I believe since I had Cunningham and David Long both playing in different formations, that's why they split stats like that. Tiger for loss, Jeffrey Simmons with 16. Oh my gosh, sacks are out the Wooza, <laughs> whatever that means. Um, this I'm probably going to just stick with this playbook because uh, Landry and Simmons are balling. Basham, of course, he's just like a fill-in player. Jermichael Hightower, four sacks for a rookie's all right. Picks, really nothing. Three for Fulton, three for McCreary, and two for the rookie Trent Conley. Hopefully he can win defensive rookie of the year. He also had a forced fumble. As for touchdowns, McCreary had one. Kicking. Matt Gay made all of his extra points, and 21 for 23 on field goals, a lot better of a season than Randy Bullock had last season. Here in the Super Bowl week, it is going to be the Vikings and the Raiders facing off in the Super Bowl. Um, all right, then. Let's take a look, see if we have any dev ups. Hopefully, Traylon Burks went up to star. He stays at normal, of course. Of course. That's what I love to see. So, nothing on the offensive side of the ball. Harold Landry is up to superstar, I believe. Was I don't think he was a superstar before. Yes. Harold Landry up to superstar, and I believe it was Jeffrey Simmons up to X Factor, so that's going to be fun. At least we are franchise tagging him this year, and um, that is the only change that I see. Let's take a look at these yearly awards, though. Obviously, we're probably not going to win anything. Joe Burrow wins MVP. Coach of the Year, Zach Taylor. Cool. Offensive player of the year, Josh Jacobs. Any Titans? No. Defensive player, any Titans? Jeffrey Simmons at four. Harold Landry at five. Offensive rookie, wouldn't expect anything. Defensive rookie, Conley gets second behind Renee Langford of the Browns. That's unfortunate. Best QB, I don't expect any. Best running back, Henry at six because he didn't get the touchdowns. Best receiver, nothing. Best O lineman, nothing. Best D line, we had Simmons at two. And Landry at three for linebacker. What 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 we gotta do to get some awards around here? McCreary at nine for best DB, and then Matt Gay gets third for best kicker. What do we gotta do to get some dang awards around this place? See who wins the Super Bowl here, and the Vikings end up beating the Raiders 
34-31. Gabe Hall being Super Bowl MVP. Let's go take a look at this quarterback. Why is this game so laggy? Anyone have answers? Probably not. Probably just because EA sucks. Uh, anyway, let's go look at the Vikings. He is, he is that guy. With 126 mil in cap space, I have no problem franchise tagging him, and that still leaves us with 100 mil. Oh, we still got to get Fulton, I forgot. Oops. Five year. Make sure he can't deny it. And we get Christian Fulton back. Coolio. Matt Gay would be the only one I'd consider. He's 30. He's still probably going to be the best kicker available. But if I can find him in the draft, then I'm going to get him in the draft and everyone else can walk. And we're going to go check out free agency now. Guys. Picked a good year to have some money. <laughs> oh, man. Lamar. Um, and Herbert and, and, and Tua and, and Hertz and, and who do I want though is the question. Do I want Lamar? I think I do. Six year. He's not interested though is the problem is what sucks. None of them are interested in the Titans. Oh, I'm going to have to overpay so hard. At least no one's interested in Hertz, so I will offer him something. It's, it's a massive contract, I know. But hear me out. No one else is offering. Highest offer. We're an underdog, unfortunately, right now. Any receivers? Mike Evans is here. Why is no one interested in this team? <laughs> oh, my gosh. This sucks. Ed Oliver has interest, though, so we'll make an offer on him. Four-year. Try that. Every player that I would want, except for Miles Jack, doesn't have con or, or, or interest. We'll offer that to Miles Jack, see if he likes it. He likes it. I can change our scheme, and it would work. A little for Ayuk if I get into the right scheme for him. What scheme does he need? He's a slot receiver. All right, I couldn't, I couldn't change the scheme to make it work for Brandon Ayuk because if I did, then our scheme fit would have been blown to pieces. So I made an offer on Duvernay since he had the most interest and he's the most decent that has interest. It's not great, but if we can get... Jalen Hurts, Miles Jack, and Ed Oliver. I wouldn't mind getting Devin Duvernay. So let's take an eval period away. Jalen Hurts is still there. We're still on top. I did get Jack and Duvernay. I didn't get Ed Oliver, but Miles Jack was like the biggest one. So I'm happy with that. Jalen Hurts, I want to bump up a little bit. Remaining cap negative. Oh, gosh. Um, Why? How about, how about this? Withdraw offer. Now we have 77 mil. Okay. Okay, negotiate. Now it's working better. Okay, let's try 28 and 21. We have to offer more than 28 and 21. All right. Why does it say remaining cap is negative now? That doesn't even make sense. Lamar went to the Patriots. Herbert went to the Giants. Tua has two teams interested. I could just go for Tua. He'd be a lot cheaper. But like... Do, do I want to do that? Jalen Hurts, come. Come to me, please. What's a... Oh, my goodness. Let's go with just player-friendly. That's still crazy, dude. I'll make the offer. That's so much money. Oh, my gosh. Am I really going to do this? I'm doing it. Targeted, he's still there. Um, okay, I guess I'll offer more. Very player friendly, please. It says negative. I don't think we actually have negative cap space. You guys are lying. What? How are the Seahawks above us? Dude, please stop telling me I have negative. Oh my gosh. Bump this up to 26. Bump this. Oh, that's as high as you can go. It's 30 mil. All right. Bump this up to 26.5. What are the Seahawks offering him? <laughs> what? I don't know if I can pay him that much. That's crazy. You know what? I'd rather get Mike Evans. He's still a beast. 
See if he'll take that. We're just not going to go for quarterback. How about that? I just want one big signing. All right. No. Wait. Didn't I get Duvernay? Uh, I did get Duvernay. Never mind. Not going to do it. I said screw it and sign Mike Evans anyway. It's going to be good to have a nice weapon. It'll put Brian Edwards down to receiver four, but I really don't care. <laughs> we need weapons. Miles Jackson going to ball out for us. Devin Duvernay at wide receiver two. I'm going to try and trade up in this draft and draft one of the quarterbacks. There's like three or four top five QBs. I'm sure one of them has to be decent enough, right? There are four quarterbacks in the top five, and I'd be okay with any of them except for the one who's on top. So as soon as three of them go, that's what I'm going to trade up. Hopefully Winslow isn't the last one there. I would be fine with any of the other three. And then we're going to go until, all right, Woodward goes first. Winslow's gone. Cool. As soon as two more of them go, I'm trading up if we have to. Hopefully we don't have to trade up. Looks like we might be okay, but they, yep, they take Haskins. Okay. As long as the Falcons don't take a quarterback, we don't have to trade up. And they do, so we have to trade up one spot. Is that enough for you guys? Works for me. Let's me get the quarterback that I want. And I didn't have to give up too much. It's only one spot. Probably gave up more than I needed to, in all honesty. But we're going to get Bobby McCants. I believe is the one that I want the most. He has really good athletics. Good throw power is okay. And then he just has A awareness, A break sack, A throw on the run, A throw under pressure. His other accuracies are okay. He stands tall in the pocket, and he has aggressive forcing passes. But I think that'll work out. We're going to take Bobby McCants here. Probably going to be normal dev. That's fine. I think he's going to be really good, and he's going to get us to the Super Bowl. Maybe not this year, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Going to go ahead and take Josh Baber here in round two. Looks like a really good athlete, and we need an edge. A finesse moves. He's projected round three to four, but I think he can be a plug-and-play kind of guy for us right now. Going to go ahead and trade my third-round pick for a two next year from the Bucks. There's just there's things I could get, like an O-lineman here that looks really good, but I'd rather pick up an extra second-rounder next year, if I'm being honest, because we do have linemen that we can use. I can get a third and a six next year from the Niners. That's what we're going to do. Let's take a look here at our draft recap. And Bobby McCann's is a 72. That's great. He looks okay, though. Ideal sense of pressure is something you like to see. He has better traits than Malik Willis out the gate. Josh Baber comes out to be a 71. Scheme fit. And, you know, he's, he's fast. Given that, not the best draft, I'm going to be honest. Ended up taking a tight end and receiver after I took that D-tackle. Brian Wheeler. And um, I'm going to be kind of upset if all the other quarterbacks are better. I'm sure they will be. This is a terrible draft, actually. No, this is just a bad draft. Luther Winslow, I was not really interested in. Of course, has hidden dev. Does have ideal sense of pressure and conservative forcing passes. He actually has all the good traits. At least he's only a star. Roman Hagens who is also hidden dev trigger happy and eh, it's not the worst but we'll see what dev trait he comes out with hopefully it's still a star and of course comes out with a superstar sent zach cunningham to the bears for a fourth round pick he will instantly be their best linebacker sending david long to the lions for a third round pick and he will instantly be a starter on their team as well going into year three this is what the team is going to look like i'm going to keep it with the tennessee playbook for now give mccants a year with that see if it's the playbook or if it's the quarterback uh, malik willis somehow regressed that's how bad he's been so hopefully mccants can turn it around turn this team around o-line is looking eh. Manny Wild slides over to left tackle because he's 6'5", 320-something, so I think he can fill out that role. Traylon Burks is going to be in the slot. We have Evans and Duvernay on the outside. And then we're going to start Josh Baber at left outside linebacker. He's actually better than Basham and younger. He doesn't have that star dev, but age and overall plays factors. Might look to bolster up the secondary this next offseason because it's definitely it's not progressing like I had hoped. McCreary's been the best at as far as progression 
And Fulton's better than his overall suggests, I think, though. We did sign Jake Elliott as our kicker for the year. And we'll see if um, we re-sign him at the midseason mark. We are 3-3. Three and three. Would have expected a little bit better of a record, but we do have a rookie quarterback who's not amazing. Jake Elliott, we'll see. Verdict's still out on him. The rest of these guys, these are all just depth pieces for the year. Except for Mr. Jeffrey Simmons, who I will offer a five-year contract. 11 per year. Let's see if he offers that. And he still wants more. This man is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, Kevin Byard, I'd be willing to, I guess, three years is fine. He does have interest in the team, so hopefully he accepts that. And Kevin Byard is back with the team. Dylan Redunds wants to come back on the cheap, cheap. And I am all, all for it. Four-year 12 mil. He comes back. Do want to take a look at stats, see if our quarterback is at least doing something. And no, it's it's got to be the playbook, especially with Derrick Henry still third. Yeah, we're going to change playbooks next year. I'm going to finish out this year with Tennessee and see how it goes. No, I'm actually not going to. I can't. I need something to get my quarterback going. We'll finish out the year with the Chiefs playbook, see what happens. So we end up going 10 and 7 and not making the playoffs. Is this what I'm seeing? Wow. Dang. I mean, I know you can get 10 wins and not make the playoffs. That's just, ugh, it sucks. Really does suck. Luther Winslow is obviously a freaking beast, and I'm mad. But also, it's obvious that the Tennessee Titans playbook is terrible. And we're going to continue with the Chiefs playbook now because it even worked out for Henry getting more touchdowns. So, yeah, although don't really want Austin Hooper to ball out. Burks had 12 touchdowns. And then, I mean, 800-plus for four guys is decent. Uh, I don't want the tight end to be getting all the yards, though. <laughs> oh, my gosh, he did so much. Miles Jack balled out. 18 tackle for loss for Jeffrey Simmons. Harold Landry, 11. I did end up re-signing Jeffrey Simmons. It's a, it's a whopper of a contract, but... The man deserves it. It's a lot. But um, he had zero interest, so it was going to cost a lot to get him back. As for sacks, Harold Landry with 13 and a half. Jeffrey Simmons with eight and a half. He's a little down on sacks. Rookie Baber finishes with six sacks, six tackle for loss, 80 total tackles. That's pretty dang good. Picks, we had four for Miles Jack, three for Fulton, two for Conley, two for Amani Hooker, and then one for Molden and McCreary. Not great. Pick numbers haven't been great at all. Force fumbles. We had a couple. Any touchdowns? No. Any safeties? Blocks? Nothing crazy on defense. Kicking? Elliott 49 for 50 on extra points and 16 for 21 on field goals. You probably won't be back. I'm going to be honest with you. And Stonehouse continues to be Stonehouse and be a beast. Let's go ahead and take a look at yearly awards. And uh, Gabe Hall, number two. Okay. Luke Dunn on there. Dak wins MVP. Mike McCarthy, Coach of the Year. No Titans. Offensive Player of the Year, no Titans. Defensive Player of the Year, no Titans. Offensive Rookie of the Year, McCants is number three. Uh, Luther Winslow and Robbie Allen had to be in the AFC as well. Of course. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Baber is number three. No Titans. Best QB, no Titans. Best running back, Derrick Henry of four. Best receiver, I don't expect any, no. Best O-line, Mark. Oh, look at Matt Gibson, number two. Getting up there. Best D-line, and there's Simmons at 10. Best linebacker, Landry at five. And Miles Jack at nine. Best DB, we got no one. And best kicker, yeah, I didn't expect him to be there, and that's why he's not getting another contract. Let's see if we have any dev ups. Maybe Hooper. Nope, no Hooper. Just, um, yeah, nothing on offense. That's cool. That's great. Love to see it. Harold Landry up to an X Factor. I'll take something. Uh, Baber up to a star. That's something. And McCreary up to a star, actually. So we got a couple people up. 
Not anything crazy. It is going to be the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl 31-28 with Super Bowl MVP being Dak Prescott as well as NFL MVP. Good for you. And we ended up getting Odigizuwa and Tryon. Unfortunately, didn't get Asante Samuel. Ended up going for some depth signings. Michael Carter was pretty cheap. Jonathan Abram as a backup strong safety. Patrick Jones backup edge. And brought Monty Rice back on a pretty team-friendly deal as a third middle linebacker. Uh, we did just good enough to not really have a good pick. And I will not pick someone who has de-released D. I don't know. Let me see. Let me see. Solid speed. It's not terrible. B spec, B medium, B catching, D D D D D D D D D D D D. Free agency recap: The Packers went ham. They got Waddle and Najee. The Cowboys got Devonta Smith. Asante Samuel went to the Niners, and they got Keenan Allen. That's fantastic. The Jaguars got Elijah Moore, and you know, just some great signings. No one got Leonard Fournette. Couldn't make a move for him to be my backup. Behind Derrick Henry, that could be a good backup. Harrison Butker's there. He'll probably be our kicker for the year. I didn't even look. You guys might think I'm crazy, but I am tempted to move up for number one for this left tackle. He looks really good. He could, you know, end up having C awareness, C pass block, but does have elite change of direction, elite strength, good speed, great excel. Solid agility is jumping sport, but he's an O lineman. Who cares? He put up 45 reps on the bench. B finesse, and he's a power blocker. Like, this dude has to be a, a monster, right? Like, I, I feel like if there was going to be a generational tackle, it was going to be Deontay Church. I'm trading a one, a two, and Malik Willis to move up to pick number one for that left tackle. Please don't let me regret this. Hidden Dev, 97 strength, 82 Excel. 69 speed is pretty dang good. He, ooh, we, please be a superstar. Please. Wow. I really was like, you know what? They're not going to take him. This is who I wanted next, Aaron Woodson. I was going to move up with a team to get him. I was like, Raiders won't take him. They still have Darren Waller, one of their top players in their team. They take him. I was like, Vikings won't take him. Panthers have a young X Factor tight end. They won't take him. I was going to wait till at least the Steelers, maybe further. But of course, the Raiders go ahead and do that. So um, that's fantastic. Fad buffle. I'm going to draft tight end Cameron Trent in the third round. Hidden dev. Pretty fast. Faster than the tight end I was going to trade for. I was going to trade for the one from the Saints. The one that they drafted that I wanted in the last draft. But I'm okay with this. Trading a three and two fours to the Eagles for their second round pick next year. There's just not a whole lot for me to draft that I want this year. And... Um, there's a little bit of value down the board, so I have a couple picks later that I'll use. Let's take a look at this draft recap, see what we got going on. 80 overall, Deontay Church. I made the right move to move up for him. And now we have 380 overalls on the offensive line, and things are looking good. Oh, he's such a beast. Then we got Thad Bethel. I just like saying his name. But um, for a second round corner, that's probably one of the best you're going to find. 76 zone out the gate. I am a-okay with that. He won't even be playing. He'll be like our fifth corner, but it's fine. And then I got Cameron Trent. He's a 74 overall. He's pretty dang fast. His route running is has left some to be desired. Uh, he has all the good traits, though. So that's something. Uh, let's take a look at the NFL. See who the best player in the draft was. It was obviously Church. Wasn't even close. Oh my gosh, the drop off after him. Heading into year four, this is what the team looks like. O line revamped. I mean, not revamped, but we got Wilds now a backup. And Pettit Free has been progressing pretty well as a backup, unfortunately. But O line looks a lot better now. Gonna start Trent over Hooper. Might look to trade to Hooper at the midseason mark. We'll see. Derrick Henry, I signed Leonard Fournette as the backup. Kirk Cousins mentor. Uh, we got Evans, Duvernay, Burke still. On defense, no big changes really, you know, just a superstar left end and star try on at left outside. And then we have Carter and Bethel at four and five corner. Our corner room is pretty solid. I just wish it was a little better. And the team's looking pretty good. Signed Harrison Butker in free agency, got Bethel as our kick returner. 
I am going to change the playbook to Tampa Bay because I, I'd like the receivers to ball out. And it's I hate always using the same playbooks, but that's just how the game is made to have certain schemes for certain teams and certain players do better, you know. It's just that's it's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, and that's how it's going to be. Tennessee playbook is played decent on defense. We'll keep it how it is. Let's see if we have a better zone or we have vertical zone run. I think we'll go with that because it's a better scheme fit. And then three, four under is probably where we're, we'll go with base three, four. Cool. At the midseason mark, we are three and four. Not the greatest turnout. Um, I did change the playbook back to Kansas City just because since we had the success with it last year, I figured maybe we should stick with it. And after starting one and three, and now we're three and four, I mean, it's kind of a turnaround. Uh, but we do have a breakout quarterback challenge here after we whooped on the Raiders last week, apparently. And um, McCants coming off a stellar game. Is he in the process of taking the next step? I definitely think so, and I definitely hope so. Uh, hopefully he can get that. We will take a look at players ready to negotiate here as well. We have Mike Evans, Amani Hooker, I definitely want to bring back. Three year, 15, uh, we'll go three year, 16.5. And we got Amani Hooker back. Tier Tart, definitely an anchor in the middle. If I can get him for two years on that, and that's good. We got Tier Tart back. So I got 69 mil. I'm not sure about Evans. He's 32. He's also a 92 overall X Factor, so maybe. Uh, should probably bring back, bring back, bring back, uh, I keep saying bring back. <laughs> uh, if I can get McCreary on that, I'm good. And he wants more. I'll probably give him more. Traylon Burks. He just hasn't progressed, man. Unfortunately, uh, I do want to bring the Conquo back. He's a good backup tight end option. Put that five for 25. Offer is perfect. Yes, it is. Oh, another big performance. All right. And Bobby McCants is a star. Let's go ahead and take a look if we can see the dev traits of our rookies as well. And Church is a superstar left tackle. That's what you like to see. Definitely worth the trade up to number one. Not sure how big of a factor he plays, considering we're having a terrible season, but we're in 69. Nice. Uh, tight end Trent is a star. That's great. McCants is a star now. Starting to see some regression. I like it. Uh, there was a breakout for Tryon. He didn't get it. Would have been nice to have the superstar over here. So we finished the season at 7 and 10. Team did just enough to like not really do make the playoffs. They literally we were just out, I mean not just out of it. But did just enough to not have a great pick and not make the playoffs. Let's see if our stats were at least good. Bobby McCants had 4,800 yards, 36 touchdowns. The picks actually went up, which isn't good. But that's not a terrible season, honestly. Hopefully he can go up to Superstar. That would definitely help. Derrick Henry, 1,513 touchdowns. You'd love to see that. 3,000-yard receivers. Cameron Trent balled out. Traylon Burks, 907. Not bad as a fourth option. 1,007 for Evans and 1,311 for Duvernay. Hopefully he goes up to superstar as well as Trent. Locking. Let's see what we had here. Not too bad. The rookie allowed three sacks. Everyone did pretty good. And Terrence Steele's more of a run blocker, so 11 is pretty decent from him. Miles Jack and Conley, both over 100 yards or 100 tackles, 100 yards. Yeah. Tackle for loss, 23 for Jeffrey Simmons, 15 for Landry. Tryon had a pretty decent season. Actually tied for second in sacks on the team, 13 and a half from Simmons, six from Odigizuwa. I mean, it's not great. It's not terrible, though. And then three players with three picks, Jack Farley and Fulton, and then three players with one pick. It's, <laughs> I mean, I guess it's better than everyone having one pick. And then any touchdowns. There's two touchdowns. Miles Jack. Oh, I mean, if he could go up higher than X Factor, three picks, two pick sixes, I'm assuming. Yeah, what a beast. 
kicking Harrison Butker. Looks like he might have missed one field goal. Missed one extra point and one field goal. That's pretty dang good. We only kicked 13 field goals on the season. We'll take a look at the Pro Bowl roster, see if we had anyone's make it. Look at Hagen's over there in the NFC. No quarterback. No Derrick Henry. Uh, Duvernay made it. That's nice. I'm surprised our tight end didn't make it. Any O linemen? Not that I see. No O linemen. Jeffrey Simmons made it. What else we got in here? We got to have something. You're telling me Miles Jack didn't make the Pro Bowl. That's ridiculous. Wow. What a bunch of liars. He definitely should be there. So that's all we had was DuVernay and Jeffrey Simmons. That's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Yearly awards, Dak wins MVP. Ramiro Gallo, coach of the year with the Falcons. Okay. And then no one for MVP, coach of the year. I swear the Falcons are somehow always up here. I don't know if their offensive scheme is good or something, but whatever. No offensive player of the year. Jeffrey Simmons, number seven for defensive player of the year. I'm really surprised. Miles Jack had a really good season. Cameron Trent, number two for offensive rookie. Come on. Dude had 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns as a tight end. All right. No defensive rookie. Best QB. Wasn't even on the list. Best running back. Derrick Henry at eight, best receiver. We had Duvernay at five, and that's it. O-line, no one. B-line, Jeffrey Simmons at five. Tryon at six for linebacker. Okay. No DBs, and Butker second for kicker. So once again, no awards, minimal pro bowlers, and... It's going to be a Seahawks and Patriots Super Bowl. I have no idea who's on either team. I'm going to say Seahawks win, though, just because. Seahawks win 44-42. That's a high-scoring, close Super Bowl. Probably be pretty entertaining. Take a look at the season recap. Jalen Hurts is on the Seahawks. That's right. Oh, great. We should have got Hurts. They just paid him so much money. Avian Holloway, the D tackle I thought about getting actually one defensive rookie of the year. McCreary wants to test free agency, and I'm going to let Mike Evans walk. If there's a better receiver, I'll go for him. If not, then I'll try and get Mike Evans back. And same for McCreary, because honestly, he's an 81 now, star at 26. I would like to see his dev trait go up, but an 81, I mean, if there's, like I said, if there's better options, I'll go for them. We do have some money. Let's see if any dev traits changed. Uh, Trent goes up to superstar. Trent goes up to superstar. Devernay didn't. Uh, Devernay. De I mixed his first and last name. Uh, Devin Duvernay stays at star. Um, no other changes. That's cool. On defense. Uh, also no changes. So that's great. That was very fortunate. I tried to give Harrison Bucker a kind of decent deal. He declined, so we'll see what happens in free agency. We'll see. Just two players here. Olave is only a star, but higher overall than Evans. No interest in the team, but I made him a pretty decent offer, and McCreary had no one else interested, and he was the best option technically for corner. Like, there's Dante Jackson, but he's old, and he's only star as well, so it's not really too big of a difference. We'll see. We get both of them. So I'm happy with that. Olave is our new number one. And McCreary comes back to join the cornerback room. Aside from that, there was like Iki Ikwanu. And if I got him, I'd move him to guard. And let me see if he's even still there. He's not. So it doesn't matter. I'm not quite sure exactly what we could upgrade on the team. I could try and bring Evans back and then have Olave and Evans. That might be nice. If I could do that. That'd be 14 a year. You know, we'll we'll see if he takes it. If not, I'm fine. We he didn't take it, that's fine. Cool. We walk away with and he goes to the Jaguars. Alright. That's nice. Kirk to the Cowboys. Peoples Jones goes to the Colts. 
Dalvin Cook's a Cardinal now. Pacheco is also a Jaguar. I didn't even realize he's up to a 90 overall. Dang. Uh, yeah. Justin Simmons back with the Broncos. Kurt Cowboy we saw. Alvin Kamara is a Texan now. I didn't even notice him because he was kind of lower on the running back thing. He was the third running back. That's crazy. If Wanu ends up with the Niners, Kelsey's a Dolphin. Yeah, I know. Kelsey was there. You can, like, get mad at me for not signing him and all, but he's 36 years old. It would have been a one-year deal, and I want to develop our new superstar tight end anyway. Trading a one, a two, and a three for Sauce Gardner from the Jets. I want a bona fide star corner, and this is how we get it done. All right, now going into the draft, I do have a second round pick that I want to use on an offensive lineman, probably. He's around two to three guys, so hopefully he'll be there at pick 11. I, oh no, please tell me it wasn't Kai Hobson that I was looking at. It was, <laughs> no way. No way. Wow. All right. Give me a second. <laughs> Trading a two or three in tier to art for Jordan Davis. I'm just, there's no one I want to pick in this draft. And I feel like this is a decently fair enough trade. I mean, tier tart's a little older, but they're also getting a two and a three. Maybe they want something in this draft that I don't want. Let's go ahead and take a look at our um, amazing draft recap. <laughs> um, just it's it, it. These players don't matter, right? They, um, it wasn't an amazing draft. Actually, let me just make sure that no one drafted someone spectacular. Running back, we don't need. KJ Slade looks like he could be decent, but I'm, I'm comfortable with trading all those draft picks for two studs on defense because hopefully that's going to be what we need to propel to the next level. I know quarterback isn't our greatest strength right now, but it's really like not much I could do about that. We got McCants and we got Olave. We got Duvernay working up there. Traylon Burks is an 80 now. Uh, Henry's regressing, but that's fine. We have our stud left tackle. O-line is looking nice. We're going to put our superstar tight end at number one. And on the defensive side of the ball, we now have, who do we even trade for? Oh, yeah, Jordan Davis and Sauce Gardner. <laughs> Two superstars to bolster of the defense because, um, yeah, we needed the D-tackle. And we needed a stud corner. Kevin Bayard's about on his last leg now. We got, uh, it's a pretty solid team. This, this has to be the year. Defense is looking really good. Only weakness I really see is McCants. And, like, receiver's not great, but it should be good enough, you know? So we'll see what it's looking like at the midseason mark. Actually, we have a mentor rookie thing coming on right here. You know what I'm saying? And Derek Henry wants to teach Jerry Cheeks, actually. We'll just go for immediate impact because it's the final year, and he's going to be Derek Henry's backup, probably. I'm at the cuts part of preseason, and then we have a lot of depth at these positions. Uh, Manny Wilds, he's just, I mean, he's solid, but we don't need him. Michael Carter's like our fourth, fifth corner, and Austin Hooper is not going to be starting anymore. Steelers are offering Deontay Johnson. It seems unrealistic, but he is 30 years old, and uh, he's a superstar still. So we're going to take that, and we're going to get rid of pieces we don't need and strengthen our receiver room. At the midseason mark, we are 6-1. and one. That's what I like to see. It looks like we have a breakout quarterback. And that's another thing I like to see. Bobby McCants coming off of stellar games. He's in the process of taking the next step. Uh, absolutely. I would hope so, actually. Um, I won't say absolutely, but it would be nice. And now we're 7-1. and one. Let's see if he got his breakout. We did win 31-28, so it's possible. Um, I don't know what that means. Any thoughts? Does that mean he did it or did I don't think he did it? Dang. That's not great. But what is great is we're seven and one and we're definitely on our way to having. Well, if we collapse and don't finish the best we finished in this rebuild, I'm I'm done with this. <laughs> no, this is the final year and I'll see you all at the end of the season. Here at the end of the season, we've earned ourselves a bye week.
First round bye. Okay. 14 and 3. I'll take a bye. But uh, it's not nice to see the Colts also at 14 and 3. At least we earned the bye over them. Let's go ahead and take a look at these season stats. I don't really see anyone on the top over there. Uh, third in offensive yards. Bobby McCants had a pretty solid season. Sixth in defensive yards. 40 touchdowns and 8 picks. Okay, McCants. Rushing. Derrick Henry, solid year. 1,300 yards and 19 touchdowns. Almost 1,400 yards. Cameron Trent in the Kansas City playbook. This dude balled out. He has to be up to X Factor at Super Bowl week. Uh, Duvernay, 1,000 yards, 5 touchdowns. Olave, 911. Deontay Johnson, 907. I had Duvernay in the slot. Probably should have had Deontay in the slot or Olave. But uh, these are solid numbers, and I'm happy with it. Blocking, 12 for Deontay Church. He's an insane pass blocker, so that's kind of depressing. But the rest of the line did really good. 12 isn't even that bad, considering what you see from some people. Simmons with 15. Harold Landry with 12.5 sacks. 7.5 for Tryon. Odigi Ziwad, 4.5. And, and Jordan Davis didn't play as a rush D tackle because he's been developed as just a run stopper. So I had him just, he only played in the 3-4. And then Tiger for Lost, Jeffrey Simmons, 16. Harold Landry, 13. I didn't even check tackles. We had Conley and Miles Jack, both over 130. Picks, four for Sauce, two for Jack, two for Tryon. Interesting. He had a really interesting season. Okay. And then one for a bunch of other guys. See if there's any forced fumbles over here. We had three. Any, we had a safety, Miles Jack and Harold Landry. Two safeties, interesting. Any blocks, I see two. Monty Rice and Patrick Jones. Kicking, I guess Kevin Boston was our kicker. I don't even remember signing him. I think the CPU signed him, but he had a pretty decent season. And then Ryan Stonehouse, of course, best punter in the league. Uh, yeah. So let's hop into this game against the Bengals and see if we can take down Joe Burrow. And let's get into the Super Sim. Hopefully the team does good while I'm watching. We're up 7-0. Take a 14-0 lead. Two touchdown lead is nice. 14-7 the Bengals make it. And then they bring it to a four-point game. Now we take it at 21-10. In the third quarter, we're up 24-10. They cut it to 24-17. In the fourth quarter, we make it 27-20 now. 34 to 20. It looks like we're going to get this game in the bag. And we'll be moving on to the next round of the playoffs. Love to see it. Zach Taylor doesn't, but, you know, I don't really care what he wants. Bobby McCants is him. 150 rating, 316 yards, four touchdowns. What a goon. Derrick Henry also balled out. No touchdowns, but I'll take 109 yards from the running back. And then, what was that? Duvernay had two for 11. Okay. Cameron Trent balled out. This is... This dude's going to be better than Travis Kelsey, I swear. <laughs> uh, Olave did pretty good. Deontay Johnson did pretty good. I didn't change Duvernay out of the slot, but he only had two catches. Uh, if, it, if, it's, if it's working, don't, don't unwork it. And we will be taking on the Las Vegas Raiders. Still have Devontae Adams in the AFC Championship game. All right, boys, one more game, and then we can get to the Super Bowl. Uh, let's jump out to a 7-0 lead in the first quarter. Raiders tie it up, 7-7. We take a 10-7 lead in the second. Going into halftime, they're going to be at 14-10. They make it 21-10, but we drive down, get a touchdown. It is now 28-16, and it looks like we're going to be going home early, boys. Kind of um, not liking playing the Raiders right now. Man. McCants, what are you doing? You can't do that. Nah, we're gonna we're gonna force win and go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> this this is stupid. Meh, I decided not to force win. I'll just show you guys real quick that I'm not force winning. Um, I'm just gonna sim the week and hopefully we get a win. If not, then it's another failure of a rebuild. And we won in the sim, so that's cool. Uh, I feel like I cheated a little bit, but I don't really care. We're going to the Super Bowl. We had an amazing season. This team is stacked. McCants had incredible season, incredible games, and just to get thwomped by the Raiders there, I don't – that doesn't sit well with me. We'll jump in against the Panthers. If they beat us, then they beat us. But um, I'm hoping we can pull out the Super Bowl win here. Let's check out these yearly awards. Josh Allen wins MVP. McCants at number six. 
I think it's about the name there. Matt Rule, even though we had a first round bye at 14 and 3, wins coach of the year. Okay. Offensive player of the year is Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry at four. I'm surprised McCants isn't even on the list. Defensive player of the year, Jeffrey Simmons at five, and Miles Jack at eight. Offensive rookie of the year, I wouldn't expect much. Cheeks is even, I didn't even think Cheeks would be on there. Uh, defensive rookie, no one. Best QB, McCants at number three. Best running back, Henry at four. We had no one for receiver. Okay. Best O line, Nate Davis at number two. Redunds at four. D line, Simmons on three. Linebacker, Landry at four. Jack at five. Tryon at seven. Conley at nine. Linebacker core is balling. All the starters are up there. That's nice. Best DB, no sauce. Best kicker, eh, Kevin Boston was at six. Would have been nice if uh, they had a best punter award. Stonehouse would win that every year. Let's go ahead and um, just check out the roster. Let's see if we have any dev ups. As expected, Trent goes up to X Factor. I'm surprised McCants didn't go up to Superstar. But aside from Trent, that's there's nothing else on offense. That's nice. On defense. They try and go up to X Factor. I'm not sure. He, or not try on this Landry. Dedoy. Uh, Landry was an X Factor. Um, sorry, excuse me for being stupid. Uh, I don't see any dev ups at all over here. That's nice. At least we have sauce and we traded for Jordan Davis, so it makes the defense look a little better. Conley, the only one that never did any kind of dev up. That's cool. Monty Hooker would have been nice if he went up at some point. But this is going to be the roster for the Super Bowl. See if we can get it here in our fifth season. So uh, McCants has a future, I'll tell you that. But if we can win the Super Bowl in 2026 here, it's going to be an even brighter future for him probably. I don't know. Team might fall apart after this though. We'll get Bobby McCants up to an 80 overall here though with an upgrade point. He's an 80 overall improviser. Let's check him out real quick. His stats are really good. Ideal sense of pressure, aggressive forcing passes is all right. Tight spiral. He doesn't have the throwaway trait, but everything else. This dude, this dude balls. And then here's Jerry Cheeks. We got Deontay Church, 86 overall. He would be higher, but I was trying to upgrade his agile since it's lower. And um, 89 pass block with uh, the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the morale. <laughs> Not the best run blocker. That's why I was trying to do agile and power and stuff because his pass blocking is off the charts. He he's pretty great. I gotta say, and we're in sixty nine. That's icing on the cake. Take a look at see how Trent has developed. Eighty three overall X factor tight end, aggressive possession, rack, fight for yards, all the traits you want to see. He's not even a terrible run blocker, actually. His route running could use some work, but he's very good at catching. He has decent speed. He's just a solid tight end. We have Conley. I wish he would have gone up at dev trade at some point. But 81 overall, 86 speed. He is the number 26 ranked middle linebacker in the league. It's not terrible. Could be, you know, better. But 85 agility on a linebacker is pretty good. He's, he's solid. A solid number two linebacker to Miles Jack. I would have stuck with Baber if I didn't get Tryon. But uh, that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Baber's not bad. He just isn't Tryon. So we're going to get into the Super Bowl against the Carolina Panthers. Jack McAllister, they also have an X-Factor tight end. The battle of the tight ends, might you say? Here we are at the Miami Dolphins Stadium. Super Bowl in Miami. You know, the players love it. Definitely partied a lot before this game. I don't know why I'm doing this kickoff. We need to send the game. <laughs> At least it's going in the stands. I wasn't even thinking. And see if the Tennessee Titans can take down the Carolina Panthers in this Super Bowl. Still 0-0 zero to zero. at the end of the first. The Panthers take a lead 7-0. to zero. Panthers take a 14-0 lead. Titans trying to get on the board, but they can't. Right before halftime, we get a touchdown, make it 7-14. to Now it's tied up 14-14 in the third. We take a 21-14 lead going into the fourth. 
It is 28 to 14, 31 to 14. It looks like we're going to walk away with the Super Bowl championship victory over the Carolina Panthers. You know, that championship game the first time was a fluke. We're going to pretend it didn't happen, even though it did happen, but we're going to pretend it didn't because the Titans deserved to win the Super Bowl after the season they had. And I wouldn't be surprised if Derrick Henry retired after this because he's, he's getting up there. For a running back, he lasted a long time. And he performed at a high level. At that age, that's pretty crazy. But here is the Lombardi Trophy coming down to the Titans for their Super Bowl victory. They have made it to the glory land with Bobby McCants leading the way. And could Bobby McCants go down as the best quarterback in Tennessee Titans history, getting them their first Super Bowl win? Remains to be seen. Derrick Henry, 100 yards. It's like natural for him. We had, no, not the Panthers. Trent didn't do as good as Duvernay. Duvernay balled three touchdowns? Oh my gosh. This is long. 89, ooh. Maybe him in the slot is a cheat code. I don't know. That was pretty good. Defensively, oh my gosh, Harold Landry balled out. Super Bowl recap or season recap or whatever. I want to see who the Super Bowl MVP was. I didn't really think about that, but I'm thinking it's Landry. Yep. Landry won Super Bowl MVP with his four sacks. Dude's a monster. We won no awards this year. It doesn't matter because we won the Super Bowl. That's the only award that matters. And that's going to do it for this rebuild. If you guys enjoyed the video, please go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe. I really enjoy doing these and I'm going to continue to do them. I'm going to swap between NFC and AFC teams. So next will be an NFC team. Haven't quite decided yet, but I'll be starting it soon. And uh, I'm looking to do every Friday dropping a rebuild. So stay tuned for that. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.